Hello and welcome to ET Inside, where we get you a 360 degree view of the big picture in business and economy. I'm Sridhar Ramakrishnan, and here's what we have for you on the show today. The Supreme Court verdict in the Vodafone tax case may have cleared Vodafone, but what does it mean for similar cases with other companies, and how will it affect M&A activity in the country? And an exclusive discussion with Zia Modi of AZB and Ketan Dalal of PwC on the fine print of the Vodafone verdict. A top story first. It was a high-stakes battle between the multinational and the Indian tax authorities. At stake, more than $2 billion in taxes. But in a stunning verdict, the Supreme Court has ruled that a transaction done overseas between foreign entities cannot be taxed by the Indian government. Will this boost investor sentiment or prove to be just a temporary relief till the new direct tax code is introduced? Nikhil Shivadas finds out. A game-changing moment for India Inc. A moment of great relief for telecom giant Vodafone. And the biggest revenue loss in recent times for India's tax authorities. The bone of contention was a 12,000 crore rupee bounty. But what was really at stake was India's reputation as an investment destination for foreign investors. It was a five-year-long battle which went from the Mumbai High Court to the Supreme Court and involved the finest legal minds in the country. And Vodafone emerged the winner. They say we are not going to treat these with suspicion or allow these kind of allegations to fly without adequate basis. And that's a very positive signal as far as the judicial system. The rule of law will prevail irrespective of the zeros involved. This judgment is by no means an ordinary one because it will help investors decide on the way they want to structure cross-border mergers and acquisitions of Indian companies. In the Vodafone case, the Supreme Court made it simple and clear that Indian tax authorities have no jurisdiction on mergers and acquisitions of Indian companies executed on foreign soil by two overseas investors. This is an interpretation which they have given on this Section 9 of the Income Tax Act, which is a deeming provision. And the general principle of law is that a deeming provision has to be strictly construed. So this principle will now be applicable to all cross-border transfers. If the cross-border transfers take place outside India between non-residents, then though the underlying asset may be in India, as it was in the case of Vodafone, there will still be no tax liability in India. To understand this better, let's take a look at the structure of the Vodafone deal. Rewind to 2007, when Netherlands-based Vodafone International acquired a controlling stake in Cayman Island-based CGP from another Cayman Island-based company, Hutchison Telecommunications. That deal made Vodafone International the default owner of Indian telecom company Hutchison SR, which was owned by CGP through a web of companies. It seems simple, but it's not. This is what the structure of the deal looked like, and it involved many entities in different countries. That's because CGP held at stake in Hutchison SR through a complicated web of companies in India, Mauritius and the British Virgin Islands. The tax department's contention was that this deal was tantamount to a transfer of assets of an Indian company and therefore should be taxed. But Vodafone was against that. We believe we have no tax to pay and uh, we would like to, the court to confirm that so that we can then focus on uh, rolling out the uh, mobile networks and the data services. Uh, Vodafone also knows what is the legal position taken by tax authorities and uh, the Supreme Court. Now, we have given our primary notice to them regarding the issues which are under consideration. But the Supreme Court has clarified that international investors can structure their investments in India through holding companies in locations such as Mauritius or Singapore for both tax and commercial reasons. And they cannot be denied tax benefits simply because the structure enables tax planning or helps in avoiding lengthy registration or approval process in India. It is clearly stated that indirect transfers cannot be taxed in the country. Vodafone was able to clearly demonstrate that the indirect transfer was not primarily with a tax motive or not at all with a tax motive. For each taxpayer who now comes up, he will have to in some form and shape demonstrate if the revenue alleges uh, that the transaction was nothing but to avoid tax. Each taxpayer will now have to at least somewhat demonstrate that tax avoidance was not the only motive and that it was not a sham 
or a dubious device. The tax uh, department is not entitled to kind of lift the provisions or look through the provisions of the law unless there is a, a clearly a sham alleged or a tax avoidance through a colorable device alleged. So to that extent, I think the Vodafone ruling provides for, for a lot of clarity and I think based they have interpreted the current law uh, to say that indirect transfers uh, of, of Indian uh, companies and Indian assets cannot be taxed. The Vodafone case also brought special purpose vehicles, STVs or holding companies under severe scrutiny and raised serious questions on commercial transactions being veiled by India Inc. as financial ones in order to evade taxes. In many ways, the fate of several Indian holding companies based in tax havens like Mauritius and the Cayman Islands depended on this judgment. The court noted that CGP was set up for a commercially valid reason and therefore stated that selling shares should be accepted as such. What the court has basically said is that you cannot, uh, you cannot pierce the corporate veil. And yes, uh, there may be consequences, uh, you know, there may be many consequential things that happen as a result of the transfer of shares of a holding company. Uh, but a holding company is a distinct and separate legal entity from the uh, sub one or more subsidiaries that it may hold. Uh, and, uh, you know, the transfer of shares of the holding company cannot be equated with the transfer of shares of the underlying entity or with the transfer of businesses sitting within the underlying entities, uh, which, is, uh, which was a principal part of the revenue's argument. From an m &A perspective, the Supreme Court's ruling has a far-reaching impact. According to experts, there are several hundred such m &A cases that are embroiled in similar litigations. These include big deals such as the ones between GE and Genpact, IDEA and AT&T, Saab Miller and Fosters, Mitsui and Vedanta, and Sanofi Aventis and Shanta Biotech. There are many cases which are in litigation. There is no precise uh, number which is there. They are all in speculations. But there have been transactions similar to Vodafone in the past which are presently getting debated and litigated. With this ruling, perhaps all those litigations also will come to a halt. So, so there are transactions and this is a really a safe harbor for many of those past transactions where there was a reopening or an, or an attack by the revenue authorities. That's one side of the story. On the other side, you have a worried government and a very tax department trying to plug what it calls tax evasion through indirect transfers. In fact, the Finance Ministry is reportedly already working on a new proposal to do just that. According to reports, the Revenue Department is considering taxing transfers between two non-residents if at least 50% of the underlying assets are in India. Experts say that the Revenue Department could also introduce the general anti-avoidance rule from the proposed direct tax code which enables the tax department to invalidate any business deals or arrangements found to be avoiding tax. The GAR will mean that the burden of proof in a tax dispute will switch from the tax department to the taxpayer. There is a, a thinking within the revenue department that certain provisions of GAR can be brought into the current uh, Income Tax Act and the current tax legislation in order that uh, you know the government can again legitimately uh, go after some of these offshore transactions and offshore structures. This is an anticipated uh, you know, move from the revenue authorities. It looks like the revenue authorities may introduce a Vodafone type kind of transaction to be taxed in the you know, forthcoming finance bill. Um, if or, or there could be uh, you know, not only a Vodafone kind of a transaction to be taxed, there could also be a possibility of a, you know, uh, some kind of a GAR that may come uh, into, uh, you know, the, in, in the finance bill. Which means that even though the Supreme Court verdict may have cleared Vodafone, it may not necessarily benefit all cross-border transactions in the future. That's not all. The Vodafone verdict is not etched in stone just yet. The government has filed a petition asking the Supreme Court to review its earlier judgment on the matter. The government's plea states that the Apex Court verdict suffers from apparent errors. It also states that the judgment is liable to be set aside on the grounds of non-consideration because the court has not considered the judgments cited in support of the government's legal submissions in over 15 aspects of the case. 
The plea says that the court has erred in judgment by saying that the transfer of management rights cannot be construed as extinguishment of property rights for the purpose of taxability and also erred in stating that this case is important for FTI because the FTI policy is unrelated to the Vodafone tax case. The plea also enlists errors in the judgment regarding the interpretation of Section 9 of the Income Tax Act on indirect transfers and the suppression of the share purchase agreement. The ball is now back in the court and for Vodafone, the battle is far from over. So what should Indian companies and global investors make of the Supreme Court verdict? Zia Modi of AZB Partners and Ketan Dalal of PwC join me on the other side of this break to analyze. Stay with us.